Hello, good morning everybody. This is Saturday, about <clears throat> 9 o'clock, and I'm going to show you one of my favorite hikes over here uh, in the Jura Mountain. We're going to hike up to Weissenstein. It's like I said, one of my favorite trails. This will be kind of like a guide. So, uh, what I'm, where I'm at now is I'm in the parking lot, the first parking lot. There's actually three. Um, and this this one is the only one that was open at the moment. So basically, it's pretty simple. You come up here to Oberdorf. You can also take the train or the cable car. And uh, take a left into this parking. And as you can see, it says free. Doesn't mean the price is free, but it means there's uh, spaces available and the, and the lot is open. So you just take a left into the parking lot. Uh, come past the pavement booth and you can see the uh, trail markers. Gotta be a bit careful here, it's ice. And follow this little path. I think it'll only take a few minutes. Just continue on the trail and eventually you'll find that you're going over a small bridge. This is the uh, railroad track. Wow, it's very slick here. And actually, you can come here with the train. I've done that a couple of times. Okay. Now we're heading under the rails. Okay. And that's the uh, train station, right there. This over to the left is the cable car, which you can also take to go to the same place that we're going. But of course, we're going to hike. So now, I think you actually do need to walk on the street, so when you pass through the <clears throat> cable car and train station parking lot, you then can uh, start walking up the street, heading towards the mountain. And I think you'll be walking on the street for a little while. Okay, so you'll keep uh, coming up the street until you come to the small bridge. At this time, you can actually uh, take a left and also make it at the same place. Or you can go straight like we're doing. Because I like the straight trail better. Actually, the one to the left is faster, but this one's more interesting. Okay, after a few more minutes, you'll come to this uh, this uh, turn in the street, and this is where we're going to choose to go straight. And to me, this is like where the real hike starts because now you're off of the road, and uh, yeah, it's more of a trail. <laughs> Also, to note, you'll be right underneath the cable car at this moment. Oh, that's pretty cool, that fog down there we just broke out of. As you can see, it's not a clear sky today, but it kind of looks like maybe it'll clear up a little bit later. I did take a quick look at the forecast, as, as usual, and uh, it looks like uh, the weather should be improving slightly throughout the day. After about 10 minutes or so of walking, we come to kind of a peak here. Then from this point on, for like five minutes, something like that. <laughs> Sorry about that. <clears throat> I was saying, from this peak on, you'll go down for about five minutes or so. Not really sure if it's five minutes, but something like that. And you should enjoy this down down sloping part because the next part will be pretty steep and pretty difficult. Okay, so I'm going to walk on this for about five minutes and I'll come back at the next intersection. See ya. Okay, here we are at the intersection. I guess it took more than five minutes to get here. But basically at this intersection, um, you can keep going straight. You can go down, which is also a very fun but difficult bike course. Uh, if you do take this 
with your bicycle, uh, make sure it's a good mountain bike and you know how to go downhill pretty well because uh, that's really steep and I've actually gotten hurt a couple of times on this path. That's the path we just came from and that's the path that we're gonna take up, up, up to the top. For me, the real trick is, is not getting too hot because with all this heavy clothing, I can overheat going up. That's a big deal. And uh, then I'll get a lot of sweat underneath and then on the way down, I'll get extremely cold. So I have to go slow, slower than I really uh, could go, just uh, just to not overheat underneath all this clothing. But what I will do at this point, I usually do, is take a small break because it's going to get a lot steeper soon. Right, just pretty much starting now, it gets steeper, and it'll just continue to get steeper for the next 20 minutes or so. So what I'll do is uh, unzip my my jacket. And I'll take a drink and try to set myself up to where I can be uh, a little bit cooler so I can get the heat out of my uh, clothing a little bit faster. Of course, in the summertime, when you're just wearing a t-shirt and shorts, you can not worry about it and just blast on up. And you'll be sweaty, of course, but when you get to rest, it'll be nice at, you know, to, to cool down. But definitely in the winter, it's a whole other thing. So, all right, I'm going to take just one, like a one-minute break and take a drink. Oh, yeah, that's one thing I wanted to show is this uh, new... Um, I don't know what you call it, uh, wattle bottle, wattle, water bottle holder I have. See it on my, hopefully you can see it, it's on my back there, it's just a strap and it just holds a water bottle and it just has like a small pocket for your keys and wallet or whatever, so I'm trying that out for the first time today. Okay, taking my break and then I'll just head up here and I'll give you an update soon. So I'm still going up the same path here, and uh, eventually when you get to this point, you'll come to this big rock right on your left, and that means you're on the right path. I don't think there's many possibilities to deviate and go off the path, but uh, as you can see here, it gets pretty steep. Uh-oh. Ooh, that's scary a little bit. Some snow falling. At least it's just snow and not rocks. Sometimes where there's rocks, or snow falling, there can also be rocks. So I'm going to go ahead and try to get past this section. Now I've made it to the section that has the cables, and up here actually a little rail. <clears throat> One thing that scares me a little bit sometimes is when I see a lot of these uh, rocks that are fresh. They've fallen on the snow, and the snow hasn't fallen on them. It means they must have, it must have fell, fallen recently. So... One doesn't bother me, but when I see a, a, soul, a little bunch of them, a little stack, then I get a little bit nervous. Because I'm afraid, obviously, that uh, more of them might fall on me. There's a little cave, really tiny cave, I guess, crack. Eventually, you'll come up to this uh, little lookout point, which for me, oftentimes, is a nice place to rest for just 30 seconds or a minute. You can get a pretty nice view of the country from up here. Unfortunately today you cannot see the Alps due to the clouds. But it's still a nice view seeing the sun rays breaking through the clouds out there. Maybe I'll do a little bit of video with my camera phone too so you can see better. And sure you can't see it with this, but there's a small waterfall, a small stream running down there. I don't think that runs full time. In the summer, I'm pretty sure that's completely dried up. Okay, let me switch to my camera phone so you can get a better view here. There we go. Now we're on the camera phone. I think you can see everything better. It's not always beautiful up here. I've taken this hike and came to this point sometimes and it's totally clouds. You can barely see a few meters in front of you. I think that's as far as we're going to go today because um, at the time it's getting to be already, it's like must be 1030 and I have a lot of other stuff to do today so I'm just going to go to Nesselboden and then go down a different way that's a bit faster. So definitely we didn't make it to Weichenstein but we weren't that much further. I mean it's only another 30 minutes but that's 30 minutes up, hanging out at top. 30 minutes down probably with the snow so I'm gonna save some time and just stop here 
I will show you though the path that you can take if you do want to go up there and we'll definitely go up there another time I mean I've been up this mountain I, I don't know maybe a hundred times now so we'll have more opportunities to uh, explore uh, different trails and going all the way to the top and in a few minutes here you'll come to this uh, this sign in this corner sometimes it's really windy at this corner I think because this is kind of the this is the edge of this ridge so like going that way going that way due west this mountain is like a big ridge and this is the break in the ridge and sometimes I guess if there's wind over here the pressure is high a lot of times it'll be very windy coming through here but today it's really still so now that you pass the corner hey look at that looks like uh, animal tracks like a deer or something I guess Uh, now that you pass the corner, um, just it's another five minutes or so, mostly flat. Um, and then you'll come to a big opening, which I'll start recording again when we get there. There's also another trail going down at this point, but you don't want to do that. Stay on the upper trail for this for this hike. You can go down, of course, but uh, for this hike, uh, we'll stay on the upper trail. Okay, here we are at the opening again. Or not again, but for the first time today. <laughs> and you'll come across this little gate. And then just walk up this hill until you come to the street. Okay, now I've made it to the top of this little hill. And you can see we're at the cable car. This is called the halfway point. So this is Nesselboden. And, uh... In reality, it's more than halfway, I guess. It's probably closer to three quarters of the way. But for today, this is as high as I'm gonna go. We just came from down there, where that gate is. And you can see there's a sign here. We're 1,057 meters. I think Weichenstein up there is around 1,200. And so actually this, the, what we're walking on now is a road again. And it's the same road that we were walking on at the very beginning. So you could walk on this street all the way back down to the parking lot. But we won't go that way. We'll go a different way. Not the way we came up over there. But uh, another way kind of, um, don't know how to describe it, but... Yeah, well, we'll see. <laughs> don't know how to describe it. There's the sign for Vaishan sign. And actually where that gate is, you can walk up there too and kind of go over the ridge, maybe just five minutes. And it's also a nice view. But I'm not gonna do that now due to time, due to the time. And because uh, we already saw pretty much the same view from that other vantage point. Okay, so now here you can continue on the street or if you can see there's a little sign there and uh, another gate. So that's the trail to go down, which we're going to take. You might remember at the very beginning when we started off on the street, there was an opportunity to hike up left. That would have been this trail. It's a faster way up and a faster way down, but uh, it's not as much fun. It's pretty much just straight. Well, and also another thing to point out is if you are tired at this point and you want to go to the top, you can jump on the cable car here, I think, or you can uh, go down with the cable car here, I think. <laughs> I've never done it at this midpoint before. Well, from this point, we're on the main trail. You can just follow this straight all the way down. Uh, I don't think there's anywhere to turn off or anything, so just keep going down on this trail. It'll take a while because it is a pretty long trail. Uh, and I uh, just enjoy the sights. There's um, some nice mountains on your, on your right. Most of the time you can kind of observe. Sometimes uh, when it's the summer though and it's all dry, it can be a little bit tough on your legs or your knees if you're not, you know, in that good of shape or your legs aren't in that good of shape for hiking. Then a lot of times, then it's, uh, I would recommend getting a stick or two, walking stick, hiking stick or two. It helps a lot. And if you don't have one and you didn't bring one, you can usually find one somewhere, just a regular stick in the woods. It'll work. A lot of times people do that and then at the bottom of the trail they'll leave it for somebody else so sometimes those are nice because they're already broken off to a good size and have you know all the bark and the moss removed 
Okay, anyway, I'm rambling enough. See you at the bottom. All right, you might recognize this place. We're back here again. We're almost where we started, where we were going up the uh, street. Right there. And there's that other trail I was saying you can go up also. But now we just came down it. So now I'm going to take a right, go down the street, just down to the parking lot. It's not very far from here. All right, I'm back at the car, and I can't believe how warm it is. But uh, yeah, that's a really great little hike. Um, I would say it's pretty easy, and it took me about two hours, two hours and five minutes, which is really slow. But uh, that's just because of the snow, and I stopped a few times to make videos and so forth. But uh, it's a great hike to do in the summer or the winter. Of course, in the winter, you have to be a bit careful because it can be slippery and there can be uh, rocks falling. But there can be rocks falling on this uh, trail anytime. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching, and until uh, next time, bye.